I don't want to be liable for any sort of mishap <laughs> it was here. Close. It was off the off to the side it's there. It's good to see you. Nice to see you as well. Uh, you brought your family out. Always. Yeah. yeah. Not a lot of open training camp action. Talk to me. It feels very business around here. Yeah, you know, always is. I mean, but it, we want to always at the end of camp to be able to spend some time with our families. But, yeah, we know what our, our job is, is to get better every day and um, come into camp and work. And so it is. It's a business-like feel when we're working. But yeah. then when it's time to spend time with our families, we definitely do that. There's lots to get to, Coach. Lots of controversial topics, divisiveness. Nothing more polarizing, though, than the choice to put Creed on the playlist for training camp. What, I mean, how Did are, they play are guys, that today? I don't know. I was, but I just heard Lane Johnson thought you were a DJ. What's that story? So Creed, nothing is like, it's like blue cheese and celery. You either love it or you don't. You do. Yeah. I think there's, I think one Creed song was on my like playlist when I was playing back in 2003. And so I still, that brings me back some memories and I, and I don't pick many songs out there, but when I do, uh, you know, I'm going to pick one that I like uh, because there's a lot of songs I don't know out there. And so um, there will be, there's a, there's a Creed song every once in a while. And Lane yeah. Johnson likes that. So uh, and he must have been singing it or something that day, and then I, <laughs> it made me think of it, and we just put it on. We put it on there. Well, they're on tour on a cruise ship, but you're not thinking about that. You're thinking about a Super Bowl, I'm sure, or just a season, or just getting things right and getting better from last year. What's one thing about this camp that is different than the ones prior? Um, you know, I, I think that one thing that's special about this team is that. You know, we come to work every single day because of the leaders that we have. And so to say that anything's different, I mean, you know, we, we're working just like we were going into the Super Bowl game, just like we were going into the first game last year, and it just feels business as usual. And that's what you have when you have four guys that have played at the same team for 10-plus years. Right. They know how to lead. Um, they know how to get everybody working. They know how important practice is, that practice has to feel like a game. And so it's business as usual to be. I know that's boring, doesn't make for good news, but it but is. There's it's not anything different. I mean, two, new, two new offensive there's coordinators. Always, that sounds fun. Sure. There's always excitement. I mean, you always are going to have excitement going into every camp. And, and um, you know, the coordinators, is, you know, Brian, you know, has been in every meeting that we've had, you know, that Shane and I ever had. Uh, Brian's been in, quarterback coach is going to be in all those. And now Brian just steps into that role. Alex Tanny steps into Brian's role, and we just continue on uh, as there. But defense, you know, there's it's just there's a lot getting on the same page, you know. Um, you know, I hired Sean to, to do the job, not to do the job like Coach Gannon did, and Coach Gannon did a great job, but to do the job the way he sees to do the job, right? And But as a head coach, you have requirements of what you want to see out of certain things, and uh, and so it's just getting on the same page, and uh, so that, that's that been uh, that's been good. That's That's been really good. Uh, really like Sean and his energy and his uh, attention to detail, and he's doing a great job. Energy is what you're all about. You're like the most intense coach. <laughs> I've, I mean, you're very chill right now, which I'm quite enjoying. Because usually, and by the way, I like this pencil visor oh, thing oh, yeah. you've got going on. That's, That's a, a good, a good new yeah. look. Look, I like it. Uh, when you, I mean, you've been with Philip Rivers. He's a, you know, a, a intense guy as well. But then you're with some chill guys like the Frank Reichs and the Romeo Cornells and uh, the Anthony Lynns. Like. Who had to tell you to chill out the most of those guys? <laughs> uh, usually it's my dad. It's really? Saying, hey, relax over there. Um, it's like a text? Uh, yeah, yeah. He's still, he was a coach, and he still coaches me today. And so, uh, But, no, you know, I think the most important thing is everything that I always learned uh, from my dad is, like, hey, go to different places. Figure out when you're going to different places, figure out what works. What doesn't work, you know, always make sure you're writing things down. And then once you when it's once it's your opportunity, you have a chance and always be yourself. And so this is me, uh, you know, and so Frank's definitely had to tell me to calm down multiple times. And Frank's <laughs> like a big brother to me. And so he was always able to be like and his, sometimes it was in a nice way. And sometimes it was he had to get after me pretty good. Uh, and so uh, I would say besides my dad, Frank is, is, is the guy and Philip and Philip has so much energy. Like, I think I just fe uh, fed off him and uh, I wouldn't say he fed off me but I definitely fed off him how is your approach with Jalen different um you treat everybody is is uh different the way yeah. you you go about it the thing one thing I will say that's similar is you know myself growing up with a high school football coach as a dad and then he was also a track coach Jalen also has that Philip also had that right all of our dads were uh football coaches while we were growing up and that's a unique thing that's that, cool. that not everybody I, we just we we all felt like a sense of like, there's a lot of pride in having your dad as a coach. And then also, like, just, wow, we were able to grow up uh, learning the craft that we're doing now. And so um, we have a lot of stories and a lot of memories to tell each other and, uh, it, you know, and with, with all those guys. So I would say that's what's similar uh, there. But everybody, you, you, 
you know, it's treated a little different of how you, you know, sometimes the, the coaching point has to be done um, in a yell, and sometimes the coaching point has to be done with a smack on the butt. And it's just Is it both ways with Jalen, or is it one way or the it's other? It's both ways with Jalen. Really? Yeah, he likes to, he likes to be pushed, and uh, I think that's a really unique thing when, when your best player, one of your best players on your team wants to be coach hard and craves to be coach hard, that's contagious. Uh, the lock screen is a big story. What does yeah. it say about Jalen that his lock that, screen that is the loss? That people got to be careful what they videotape in TV. Uh, is that your message? <laughs> that was one of, no, that was, you know, but. I mean, you go viral. Are you, wait, hold on. You go viral every 20 seconds. Do you, come on. Do you, do you know, first of all, we'll get back to the lock screen. Do you know that what you say is something about a flower or a pod or the, the Chris Stapleton, who I hope isn't on the playlist because you were bawling to me for the Super Bowl, letting a little emotional release there. Do you know it's going to go off? Are you like, why is this going viral? Uh, you know what? I'm not a social media guy and I'm not, I don't, I don't have it. Uh, yeah. And I guess I, I do watch, you know, I do watch uh, morning shows and things like that. So I do, I guess I see it on those, but no, I never know. I just, I'm just being myself. I yeah. Like when you stop at a wedding and hang out, you don't understand that that's <laughs> going to go completely viral or I don't know, taking, by the way, I think you're a brilliant coach, decision maker, Jaeger, <laughs> coach Jaeger. Yeah, th actually. This is a terrible choice. Hey, Brett, what was that? was that? Was actually Fireball, not Jaeger, right? That we had the, the they're was showing it. Was it Jaeger it, or Fireball? Fireball. Oh, okay, that's okay. Yeah. As long we, as it was really cold. I haven't done Jaeger since college. Okay, I was yeah. going to say, because everyone's saying, see, I'm, cl I'm glad. This is what my show will do. Clarify the really important things that matter. Yeah, yes. The Jaeger. Back yes. to the lock screen. Yes. Uh, what does it say about him? I think it just, I, I think it's healthy when you let things um, drive you, right? Your past failures, and, and he played a great game, but at the end of the day, right, as a team, that was a failure for us. We didn't accomplish what we wanted to accomplish that game, and uh, and so he lets that drive him, and, you know, and, it, and I think that's who he is. That's who he is, right? He lets his, his past things that he didn't like the way they worked out drive him, and uh, you know, when you use that tool uh, the right way, it can be in a very effective tool. And uh, and so it just it just shows you how determined he is. He, he's a special guy. And I think that the world really saw that that last year. We've we've seen it the last two years and, and people in this building have seen it the last three years mm. where I was even here. He's a special guy. He's the same guy every day. And he's a great leader and a great player. And, you know, it's, it's funny when you talk about Jalen Hurts, the first thing people talk about is his intangibles. They don't even talk about all the great 100%. things he does on the field. And so you know how – like, hey, you don't even say the first thing. Like, hey, remember that play he made in New Orleans where he made the guy miss and cut it back, held the guy's jersey up in the end zone, or his own jersey up in the end zone. You talk about his intangibles. And so that should tell everybody how special the guy is, that those are the first things you're talking about are his leadership, his work ethic, his his demeanor, all those things. And that's special. What makes him special. Everyone talked about that even before he got the gig. Mm -hmm. When he had no, you know, it wasn't even in his sights to have that gig. He'd be the last one to leave and he was working so hard at it. Let's say everybody on their lock screen puts what motivates them. You're saying it drives you. What's on your lock screen for 2023? You know, that can be a lot of different things. That my, my lock screen still, my family, it, it, that picture of my family at the Super Bowl. Uh, and that doesn't mean you work, so you work to get back. To, you work to get better every day so you give yourself a chance to, to win games. And so, but, but you know, I, I love my family, and, it was, and that's, that's what motivates me. I, also, always something that also motivates me is never wanting to let anybody on the team down. Uh, down. You know, my job is to be the head coach. My job is to make decisions on fourth down. My job is to make sure the message is clear. So, you know, and when you have a team that everybody's trying to not let each other down and and just motivated because they, you know, they don't want to let their brother down next to them, that's a special thing. And that's a special thing that this team's had the last two years and that you have to work hard at getting. And that's what we're working on now is that, you know, not only the, the stuff that we're doing on the field, but also the stuff we're doing off the field to get closer together. Because it's not the be it's not the best group of individuals that wins; it's the best teams that win. And so um, that's a great motivation for me, like my family, and then also just you know wanting to to make sure I, I do my best job so Jason Kelsey succeeds, or Jalen Hurd succeeds, or Hassan Reddick, or anybody else on the team. Is that Bradley Cooper or Miles Teller? Like who's the uh... Who's flying in on the it helicopter could be, here? It could be anybody. Is that for you? Are you getting be airlifted? The Eagle. Eagles are pretty popular here. <laughs> that, that, listen, that could be true. Uh, I think it's very cool that you are so vulnerable. I really do. I think it's a little bit rare. It's a little new wave. 
progressive. I really appreciate it. I'm so curious on how much of that is a decision and how much of you can't control that. Whether it's an emotional moment, whether it's a playing into the players, is it all calculated? No, it goes back to just being yourself. Yeah. Um, I've always been emotional. You call my, my brothers, my dad, my high school teammates, whoever. Like, I'm just emotional. And, um, again, you just, I don't, I think when you're, when you go out and you try to be somebody that you're not, especially in a leadership role, people will see through that. So, you know, I try not to pretend to, to be anything but who I really but am. Like, and there's the parcels, like business, business. Sure. You, and, and I grew up in that way. My first coach that I worked for was Todd Haley in the NFL, oh, who was the parcels guy. Oh, man. He showed his emotion. <laughs> I forgot you had Haley. Oh, gosh. That was a lot. That must have been a lot. I liked it. Man, I wish social media was around uh, back then. But then I think about, like, you know, even just the candor of you saying that you watched the Super Bowl. Sure. When's the last time you watched it? Jacob. When's the last time we watched the Super Bowl clips? A couple weeks ago? So Jacob is your son. You guys oh, yeah, watched we watched it yesterday. the quarterback. We watched the quarterback uh, thing. Yeah, it was yeah, the other day. Are you, you know, like if I'm going through a breakup, I'm listening to Adele, you know, and I'm putting myself in the melancholy. What's making you watch this over and over again now? I think, again, first of all, I think it's the first thing you have to do is you got to make sure that you don't make the same mistakes again, right, and learning from the film. But then the second thing is, you know, you keep watching it. They're on all our cut-ups, right? They're on our cut-ups. It was on the, the quarter. We were watching the show, The Quarterback. I'm watching it with my son because mm -hmm. uh, he's inspiring to be a, a quarterback uh, this year on his peewee team. But he's got to beat out his, his one Hold friend. Hold on. He's coming. You can take Bunch, uh, throw some balls behind us. <laughs> Jacob, why don't you come over here? He, oh, he's a lefty. I'm not sure. He's, he's a little southpaw? He's, he's a lefty. Good. It's extinct in the NFL. <laughs> Bring him back, baby. We need a lefty. He might not beat out his buddy Seamus, so he might have to play receiver. But that he's oh. working. At, at well, watching what, what are you doing? What are you, you're going to let him get beat out by some other guy whose dad's like he's a... Pretty, he's a pretty good player. His dad's Jimmy in accounting? What are we talking about? So, you know, but we're, you know, we watched it because we watched the quarterback because I like watching those things with my kids because they're so just the same way I like watching those things with our team. There's so many good coaching points from them. We're watching The Last Dance and we're watching, uh, and we're watching... Uh, just my oldest, not my two younger. The last dance and uh, and the quarterback uh, show together. You have your hands full. Yes, I definitely but do. I feel like everybody says, don't think about the Super Bowl. Don't go back to it. You have this thing facing you that's this crazy 1974 thing. Yeah. I know you're doing a bit of a science project. Sure. With this and with, with the NFC not getting back. And it's all because of the offensive coordinators get poached. You're getting penalized for what you did. Sure. Steichen's gone. You know, Shanahan left. The Falcons couldn't get back. Yada, yada, yada forever. Fran Tarkenton. We're going to let Fran Tarkenton. <laughs> All respect, like be the last person to do this. What are you? What did you find out in your science experiment? Well, what are you doing about? Well, first of all, obviously, really excited for Shane. He's a great football coach, really good friend of mine. I was, I was actually just telling my wife the other day, man, I miss Shane, and that, and not anything because just the friendship and the and the connecting that that went on there. And what do you miss that. most? Just Shane, just Shane being himself and like coming in and, and talking about maybe not even anything with football, but it is. It's I spend more time with him these last three, two years, and then when I was with San Diego, and then I have with my wife. So, first of all, happy for him. But secondly, I don't think it's never uh, – the goal is not – sure, the goal is always to win football games, and, and but the goal is to get better every single day. And the goal – the things that you can control are, are your process, like how you go about your business every day. And then you – Wherever your cards are at the end of the, the day, if you can look yourself in the mirror and say, I, I worked every day to get better, and, we're, and we, have, we have some good players on our football team, and we were a good team last year, no doubt, but that doesn't mean anything. It's about working every day, and then we'll, we'll play the cards as, as we lie. But, you know, one, you, of course you're going to study what, like, why has this not happened, right? You study what, what makes a team successful after a bye? You study what makes a team successful. Right, but what more game. could you have done in the Super Bowl? Like, I feel like I just want to just take you back a little bit and reel you in from what, like, where do you pause and say, ah? There's a lot of. It, it's never just one play. That oh, give me one good. play, coach. Well, I will. I will. No, I mean this is the. This is it. It's not. It's always. It's always a group of, of things that you think you could do better. Whether it's a, a you know a decision that I made to to punt it in a certain situation, whether it's a decision to not go for it on a, a you know in our red zone and kick a field goal, or man, I could have coached that that one thing a little bit better. That you know we missed. You know maybe Zach Pascal had a little early block on something. Man, I should have coached him better. So the oh, but the important thing. 
thing is that you always look yourself in the mirror first. And that's how people get better, is, and the leaders have to do that first. They have to look themselves in the mirror. They have to get dirty with the things. that. And it's okay to get grimy and say, hey, this is, I, I messed this up. I didn't do this well enough. That's how you get better. So it always starts there first, and then every player does that. And so, you know, and of course you want plays back, and I, but I look at the plays that, you know, that I want back as myself first, and, and that just drives you to, to coach it harder and coach it better the next time. Is there a play you want back? <laughs> a specific play you can't? Uh, yeah on, again coach. i just looked at myself first yeah. and i okay. and i want to and i want in a situation to you know maybe on the third down to have a different approach on the third down before we had to kick a field goal on fourth down and so um you know but you know that that was the call we made at the time we thought was the best decision and at the end of the day it was it wasn't good enough and so i want maybe that third down call back prior to you know going you know kicking the field goal on fourth down you're gonna have a chance here and you've got brian johnson who i'm juiced about because he's awesome. i mean i don't know much about him but i look at his work and what yeah. he's been able to do and i look at you know the anthony richardson of it all the Dak prescott heisman year and then i look at two years of being the quarterback's coach for jalen hurts now he's going to be the play caller what is he like as a play caller um you know he he's he's done it before that's one thing like I think that people don't know he's done it at Florida right and I know that's not the NFL but you know that's big time college football and he's done it before he sat in all the meetings a lot of the calling it is the prep that goes into calling it right you know I don't people may think that we go out there and just just let it rip but there's a lot of prep that goes into it and you have a lot of discussions on what you're going to do on on this third down in this situation on this uh fourth down in the red zone on one area like all those decisions are made prior to the game now the game changes and you have to adjust as it goes um but that's something that we've that we're used to too of like hey they do this we get to this they do that we get to that and so the preparation is done throughout the week and throughout the year and, and and brian's been on all those all those discussions with with myself and with shane and uh you know so really excited for him to go and i think what you know one thing that people don't know about him and i and i actually our our rookie quarterback tanner was like you played quarterback in college and i looked at tanner i go he played quarterback <laughs> in college he was the runner-up to the heisman yes he played You're Sam like, bradford hit the beat books, him out kid. Yeah. hit the books, <laughs> hit the books. so, so he was not only a you know great coach uh, uh, obviously a phenomenal player and yeah. got a lot of energy and young yeah he's he's but 36 36 we had a good young we, i think that's how old shane was when we hired him i too. mean is kelsey older than him I think it's close. I, oh, I think he's older. Is he, I think, we'll I, have I to look know. that up. Yeah. Grizzled old veteran man. <laughs> Last one for you, and I appreciate the time. I really course, do. I know yeah. you have to run around, and you've got your family here today. I want you to enjoy some of that. Uh, what's the one storyline that you're hearing? I know you don't pay attention to it, but I know that you know. What's the one thing you're hearing or being questioned or being that you're like, where are they getting this from? Just the media at large or what the question or the criticism or just the takeaway, that, the, the observation that you're like, what is this? I don't know if I, I – you know what? I, I – I think the the thing I hear personally more than anything is like how good the Eagles are. I don't want. I don't, I, That's right, baby. And I'm more. Here's the worst that my Eagles fan <laughs> producer. I'm more in the sense of like we haven't done this 2023 team hasn't done anything. You know, we got to work every day, and that's how our guys go about their business. And so, you know, it's a little different. When we first got here in uh, 2021, this our staff and with some, you know, with some of the players, it was like. That's a rebuilding year, and uh, there's no rebuilding years in Philadelphia or in the NFL, and uh, and so, but it's it's definitely an opposite feel. You know, there's definitely hype, which is cool. You know, for the city and for the fans, but it's it's really important that we don't buy into that hype and that you know. And this was that was the feel a little bit last year when we started. I think people were saying, "Well, this is like the dream team." Like, no, we're nothing yet. We until we start doing it day after day, and so we're gonna lean on that past experience of of what we did last year of just put the daily work in got a little bit better each day only control control what we can control and that's our process and and get better and then we'll see where the cards lie at the end of the year you got to get this kid the quarterback one start <laughs> you got work to do got work you got to work do. to do coach good luck this year my drafting so deandre swift in fantasy yeah you'll have to wait i I, 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 can't, ball? I, think he I might. can't ever i can't ever help anybody with their fantasy teams oh okay <laughs> i'm sure you can't because you use everybody all over the field you got too many weapons that's why i don't draft many eagles because everybody gets the ball and they do all these crazy things each and every week we appreciate your time yeah, enjoy thanks, the man. family enjoy it we'll be it. back after this on up and adams with fletcher cox lane johnson you gotta get on that christmas album uh you got pipes you can sing i actually am not bad I'm actually not 